I've always envisioned like propaganda posters for each covenant. I've seen like a, uh, we want you to join the Warriors of Sunlight. I've seen those, but only oh yeah, the for, for the Sun Bros, yeah, for because they're like iconic. But like for any for any other covenant, that gives me an idea for an NPC. <laughs> <laughs> How does that give you an idea? I I just want to hear the covenant like leaders dog on each other. I get a lot of people auditioning to voice act, and then I ask if they're from the United Kingdom or have a natural English accent, and uh, 70% of these people do not. In fact, the majority of authentic voice actors are people who are recommended rather than people who apply. That's actually something I was curious about. Like, I, I did see a lot of like a, original voice acting that was in the uh, the demo. Like the the amount of it, I think, was what impressed me because I was just like, "Wow, they actually found like a whole roster of people to like participate in this." Yeah. Um. What um I wanted to avoid is uh, because obviously on a project like this, everybody wants to pitch in, right? Yeah. I I wanted to avoid how in um from software games there is a uh, one voice actress who voiced ever since Demon Souls. Uh. Or maybe not Demon Souls, but ever since Dark Souls 1, she voiced Guinevere, she voiced Priscilla, she voiced the undead merchant woman who sells moss, and then in Dark Souls 2, I don't know what she did, but I know in Dark Souls 3, she also voiced the uh, cleric women who burn you. Everyone who wants to join is like not professional, right? And the voice actors on Elden Ring, etc., have done it for From Software for nearly a decade. And um, we do have some characters who share a voice actor, like. Uh, the Oracle Gennaro One Eye is voiced also by the same voice actress as the NPC Saria, who wears uh, the Lois set and the Onion set. Uh, Layla has another role, uh, the, the voice actress for Layla, Snowzy. A lot of the male roles are done by the same guy. Well, we have like a handful of guys, but they all handle a handful of characters. Like the Dying Abyss Watcher, because he's like a one-note character, that actor also has... Um, a different role as well are all of the uh the voice actors like were like did, did you hire these people or did they just like come to you seeking like did they like volunteer a lot of it was word of mouth um certain ones were us searching for them for example we wanted vasividia and then i gave him a list <laughs> of characters that he could voice uh so preceptor karen the uh, you know the finito in the cathedral um flynn or another character that wasn't conceived. I was like, you could, we could create a lore dump exposition character for you, but he mm -hmm. chose Flynn. Oh, and I put in a, a post asking for someone on Twitter to be Princess Selen, who in the mod doesn't say her name, but you will recognize her as the dancer. He's uh, Miss Chalice, if you know Miss Chalice. Oh, cool. Yeah, I yeah, saw I that she uh, was in the trailer too, like the voice. Yes, and that's a line that's not in the demo, that's in the trailer, actually. She's recorded a bit further into the quest line than is available. Okay, so a lot of, like, the voice acting, you'd say, is, like, community-driven in that aspect. Like, you didn't have to go out and search for people who had no idea what Arch Thrones or Dark Souls was. Like, a, a lot no. of the people who participated, like, they knew exactly... What, what they yes. were getting into. Not everyone. Sometimes because, you know, people, it is it is sometimes a job and some people want to do some volunteer voice acting just so that they can have like a demo reel to apply to voice acting roles right. with. That makes sense. We did early on when we were jumping the gun, uh, <laughs> we did have a few Americans who Big Boss brought on purely because they saw that we posted voice actor requests on Twitter and they're like, oh, voice actor, me, 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 me. And <laughs> early on, it was just like a recruitment drive. Now I vet everyone. Probably so, a good decision. Yes, I, I took control over any, any, anything creative. The, the voice actors, I, um, they go through me first. Usually they're told to contact me in general. Okay. If they ask someone else, everyone always redirects people to me. Um, if we bring on a 3D artist, a 2D artist, all the 2D, the concept art team, the illustration team, are people that I picked out myself. For the most part, Arch Thrones is written by me, lore-wise, story-wise. It's just a, 
uh, Big Boss telling me he wants these characters to feature together, and then me writing writing around that, right? Like gameplay first, uh, then story second, until I started getting a bit more uh, critical, and now they go hand in hand, especially because now there's an actual story involved. You know how there's like lore communities, like every lore YouTuber has their own community. <laughs> yeah. And even then there's niche communities that have no YouTubers. They are just people recruited from across the, the internet. Uh, so I have two friends who are mega Dark Souls lore nerds who help me with the writing when I don't want to do the writing. Um, and some of the voice actors also pitch in. And of course, some of the developers for things like writing, what does a weapon art do? It's, it's mostly people writing things and then tagging me in discord and going is this good <laughs> and then and then me saying let's cut that down to be more concise because you may have noticed a lot of lore items are just big walls of text and you may have noticed that erwin of kareem is a big wall of text in terms of npcs uh, that's, um, that's just dark souls like sometimes i look at a script and go oh nobody would drone on and on like this with this type of language Mm -hmm. So I cut things down Make to sure it's even more natural, even if it is, you know, Shakespeare in English. The first thing I do is ask if they're from the United Kingdom. And then, uh, if not, I ask them to, s I ask if they've got a demo reel. You ask and them to if leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to chase an authentic aesthetic, right? And yeah. there's two things in on an amateur game design project like this. There's two things to watch out for if you're directing a voice acting team, right? There's either they're not a voice actor, but they have a natural voice that I want. And so it's helping them sound, uh, how you say, like they are a voice actor. Uh, a good example would be Hazel. She was not a voice actress, but she was a friend of a voice actor. And he helped, we basically helped direct that performance. She has a wonderful, authentic native accent to the United Kingdom, which is why I gave the okay on doing that. Also, it just, I, I felt like Hazel as a character was very sincere. So I wanted a performance that was particularly sincere. Okay. So, because she's a very uh, friendly, type character 90 percent of people emailing me or messaging me on discord is me going send me a recording of you as shira never mind the pronouns that she uses to refer to herself i just want to hear you speak this way and um if i want a specific role because sometimes we have roles available and i'm looking for people to fill them right that's when i kind of ask them to send a reel of a specific character impression if there is a role mm -hmm. open i always have an idea of how I want them to sound. In which case, when someone asks if they can um, be a voice actor on the project, I tell them, oh, can you do these lines sounding like this character? Or can you read from this character's script sounding like that character? For example, reading from Aegon or Anri or from Shira. Otherwise, okay. if there is no available role yet, because we are still writing new NPC dialogue, there's in terms of NPCs, there's a lot of important NPCs to the um, story and mod that aren't in the demo. Is it all, like, is it specifically British accent? Because I know that um, in Elden Ring you also get a, and I guess like, kind of in Dark Souls 3 too, a bit of Welsh, like, more Irish accents, like, kind of mixed in there. Well, I'm just using British as shorthand for the United Kingdom as a whole. Okay. We do have a team member who is Welsh, and I constantly beg him to do a voice. <laughs> we have a Polish voice actor. He kind of sounds like Dio from so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just literally mod Dio into the game. Basically, yeah. Like, here's no, your that's role. The, that's the voice actor for Florian, <laughs> but I made him try his best to sound British. I'm I'm kind of snooping on the on the Arch Thrones Discord here. You also have the role of uh, map design. In, in general, basically, I want. So the demo levels, a lot of it is just us going with the flow. I insisted on us, you know, designing lay layouts in a map, having concept art for each location, and then gray boxing and trying to have more deliberate level design rather than going, oh, here's the undead settlement approached from bottom up. I did notice there was, um, because I guess there's like, there, there is a lot of overlap between the visual design of arch thrones and like other souls game i think there kind of has to be because um kind of how like the phoenix tower area was modeled after hydas tower in dark souls 2 
but yes. you also look past the surface and like you see like it, like it, like it's easy to see the area has its own set of unique details that do a really good job like it sets it apart from Hydas Tower. Ah. Like you, you don't think of it as Hydas Tower like oh this is Phoenix Tower from Arch Thrones. In in your opinion is is there like a line that separates original from derivative like at what point in time did you did you decide okay this no longer feels like Hydas Tower 2 this actually feels like its own area it, it was mostly in first of all it started off using you know profane capital map pieces right because the the map that connects to Irithyll dungeon where you fight the disgraced knight boss mm -hmm. is the profane capital like space with the roof removed and you know an ocean added in and of course map pieces from dark souls 2 placed there to like blend in like originally it was just uh assets from dark souls 3 that were re like the roof the roofing in a lot of architecture in this game is red right and so we changed like the roof shingles and by we i mean aaron the very talented aaron the baron from the convergence <laughs> mod he um he was the one who was responsible for setting up most of the level design especially in part in particular in terms of uh decorating things like redecoration so while originally we had set up this profaned capital turned blue he added on like his own little cathedral thing uh with uh pieces from other levels uh i think lothar castle a anything that works basically uh maybe even the ring city might even be in there i, I don't know what he mixed and matched to create um that extra cathedral mm -hmm. part of uh Hyde's tower. It like on the inside it is Yorm's boss room where you meet Quela and Florian and yeah, Tessa. I thought that was but cool. The outside is something Aaron made using pieces of I guess Lothar Castle with a blue roof shingle instead of red. Uh of course now we also have map pieces from Dark Souls 2, like Hyde Tower, otherwise known as the Phoenix Tower. Um so I I think the fusion of those two sources helps set it apart. Of course, in the future, we want some more original stuff as well, like stuff that we've made ourselves from scratch, uh, from the ground up. But obviously, that takes a lot of time and effort. I think that's um, like I think that's just like one of the major downsides to working on, because like you're working within the scope of someone else's game, so like everything you do is going to be inherently limited to an extent. Like unless you really just want to like shovel out the extra work and like just make assets and just put them in the game basically yeah and um of course we have people who did offer um for us to use things they've already made or have offered to work on making assets like uh an artist who's on our team called neil who's usually very busy but he has been working on an unreal engine like gothic cathedral that he said we could use and so in the future for level design, if I have need of a gothic cathedral, or at least pieces of a gothic cathedral that isn't already in Dark Souls, uh, we do have that available. You've got that ready, yeah. Yeah, uh, along other, among other things, like, oh, here's armor sets that I've modeled. Not me, but like, just for example, like, we have other artists who are like, oh yeah, I made this a while, can we use this? And then me f trying to figure out if I can find a reason for it to work in Arch Thrones. I, I love how people, um, like a, a lot of people when they play modded projects like I, I guess like for example when i was teleported to the war torn village so like my first time like mm -hmm. heading into the demo i saw one of the great axe knights like the great axe winged knights and they like i remember them leaping at me with an overhead swing and my, my, my brain was immediately just like oh shit bloodborne executioner because i recognized the animation like right away yes and um, yeah. I was recognizing so many little things. And, and like I said, that's a necessary evil when it comes to these big projects. I guess like, what, what do you think is the better approach? Should you try your hardest to cover that up and like blur the lines as much as you can between your project and other games? Or do you think it's better to just play into it and like fully embrace it? Um, I, I, ideally, you can um, mix things up, right? Like certain enemies or bosses have mixed up movesets from across different characters so mm -hmm. they don't feel as obvious like obadiah or obadiah however layla says yeah it, the, ne the necromancer boss fight he basically was a, he was a cool boss but sometimes i i think it works better to lean into it very much um for example aldrich 
I am very pleased with. Um, my first few sketches of Aldrich, first of all, translated really well into the final 3D model, thanks to Spoongus. Certain characters are using the skeleton of a pre-existing character, right? Like the dancer NPC, she's actually just a reskinned uh, Zamor hero knight from Elden Ring, that's why she stands all strangely. But Aldrich uses the exact same rig that came with Dark Souls 3. We just that's chopped really Gwyn- cool. Yeah, we yeah. chopped Gwendolyn off the top. There's no new animations, there's nothing new about the way Aldrich moves or functions as, I think like, that works. A, as a 3D model in the game that roams around and attacks. And that type of limitation I, helped a lot with the creativity, I think, of the boss fight. Like, oh, how can we portray Aldrich, this slimy uh, mouth monster, without um, just spamming deep spells or making him into just sludge that you attack on the floor? I, I think all the black gunk on the floor in the original Aldrich, the Devourer of Gods boss fight, is meant to be part of his body, because mm -hmm. he softened into sludge, but, um... He can, like, resurface and stuff like that. Yeah, um, there were so many, uh, iterations of how we wanted to maybe present him. Like, at first we thought, oh, maybe it could be a puzzle fight, and he's, like, leaking out of the cof coffin, and you have to somehow attack the coffin. But then no we didn't want to add in new geometry so that you could actually, like, go to a second, I don't know, rafters, <laughs> and shoot something down in there, etc. Um, in the end, I, I think the Deacons of the Deep, with uh, Aldrich coming out of the coffin, and Aldrich functioning basically the same way, just with an added phalanx, was uh, perfect. Uh, all, all yeah, ways through. Very cinematic. Ba basically, nothing changed about the Deacons of the Deep fight or the Aldrich fight, minus the fact that there's no uh, person on top of the worm. Boss fights always like really excite me, not just with mod projects, but just like with Souls games in general. And I think making a project like this and actually have it feel and play like another Souls game, like it requires a very full and comprehensive understanding of how the game itself even works to begin with. Mm -hmm. I think in your opinion, I, I, I want you to give me a lesson. I want a lesson on how to make the perfect Souls boss fight in your opinion. In my opinion. Yeah, and just like use as much detail as you possibly can. You, would I have the same restrictions that we have now in terms of like we don't have an, uh, you know, custom animations or anything? The, the same restrictions, only you are in charge of literally everything. Okay, um, hmm. I like Spectacle. I really enjoyed Radon in terms of, oh. Hell yeah. There's, uh, in, in, in terms of Spectacle, I don't just mean, oh, this guy looks cool, but the way he's presented is also engaging. So even if he fights like a standard duel, I, I, I want something gimmicky, like a, a unique, memorable gimmick. Like, for example, Radon didn't have to be you rushing him with an army, right? But being able to rush him with an army in Elden Ring made me enjoy that so much more it, than it I would, already would have. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, That's such um, a cool fight. Rikard, for example, is basically a sitting hitbox, but like in the middle of a room that doesn't go anywhere, that you attack with, uh, you know, Storm Ruler, basically. Kind of like Yorm. But at the same time, unlike Yorm, the build-up and presentation to Rikard, and also the way he looks, is highly fantastical. Like, there's something, like, I was so satisfied and engaged, even though that boss fight was one approach the way they want you to with the Storm Ruler spear thing that they've made in Elden Ring. It was still very, very memorable, just because of, like, the ambience. Personally, if I were to change anything about Aldrich, I would make him be able to eat you. Okay. Would that be I'm like sure. a one hit? Or would that <laughs> be like just like a Maybe standard you, grab attack? Yeah, perhaps you just come out of his sludge body because he's kind of just a head. Or it could be an insta kill, who knows? There are some enemies that I feel like are insta kill when they grab you, such as the tree spirit in Elden Ring. When it eats you, that always feels like I'm good, as good as dead. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I would have to theory craft a brand new one, but based on like her existing boss fights like the perfect thing I, I think spectacle is like a good place to start yeah. like presentation wise I, I let's think about like the phases like would there would it just be a standard like two phase like gets more aggressive as you fight it kind of boss or would there be some because like the transition into Radon's second phase is of course the giant meteor coming down 
I think the most well done boss in the mod is um, Hattie and Skull, the uh, Abyss Watcher and the Ice Wolf. Because, first of all, you see all these Abyss Watchers everywhere across the entire game. Like, oh, so now they've established a presence that you're thinking about. Like, oh, they're out and about here and there. Then we built up, oh, this is a place where uh, Chaos Flame was doused with ice. And now this place is suffering from this profaned flame, which Andre in the original game says is abyssal in nature. Then you go into the outskirts in what feels kind of like the painted world level from the original game. Mm -hmm. and, and then you approach and, oh yes, because there's members of the Undead Legion here, now we're fighting one of their captains. But because like the specific topic or story, micro story of this level is that there is a fire that is, you know, uh, sealed away in ice. Now there's an Abyss Watcher who is partnered with an Ice Wolf to help deal with it, right? So mm. first of all, like all, all the good uh, story build up falls into place. So, oh look, of course I'm fighting this Abyss Watcher who is using ice because I guess this uh, dark force that still manifests as a fire is best fought with ice, right? And then in phase two, um, the, the wolf comes in and I don't know if anybody noticed this, but if you kill the Abyss Watcher without killing the wolf, the wolf will consistently revive him. Interesting, kind of like the, I didn't know that. Yeah, kind of like the uh, Prince Lothric boss fight yeah. in the original game. Um, and of course, there's that idea from the original Abyss Watchers fight that because they are undead like you, they keep getting up. But also, there's the idea that the original Abyss Watchers owed their strength to the Old Wolf of Farin. In terms of that being the most well done boss fight, it's not only is the fight fun, like me mechanically fair in terms of duo gank fights, right? Um, but yeah. <laughs> it, it also... <laughs> oh, I know about the angels fight, I know. Um, but <laughs> it also has all this... Um, all these threads woven together in a way that's extremely satisfying. That does make sense. I think having the story, like you said, like having the story of a specific area kind of escalate to the point where it builds up to a very specific boss fight, I, I think that's, very that in specific. and of itself is a good payoff. Yes, with a very specific gimmick too. Like, oh, he, of course mm -hmm. the wolf is going to keep reviving, um, I think his name is Rhyme Blood Hottie, until you kill the wolf. And of course this Abyss Watcher is fighting with a wolf as a companion. Like, like every, every decision there makes sense. And I'm glad for that because most of that wasn't my decision. I <laughs> just knew that uh, the team wanted an ice frozen abyss watcher as a fight. And I said, okay, cool. And they said, oh, okay, now let's add the wolf in. And I said, okay, cool. Of course, I always pitch in sometimes and like, oh, maybe it should do this and that. But at the end of the day, that's not my job. <laughs> I, sure. I have a lot of work. I have a lot of work doing the other things, you know, drawing, writing, uh, directing actors, and then voice acting myself um, on certain characters. So I'm just uh, pleasantly surprised by how perfect that boss fight is because I didn't suggest, oh, add a wolf in or, oh, make it do ice attacks. I think the only thing I might have suggested was give it some attacks from the Bloodhound Knights because I haven't yet played Arch Thrones uh, because I knew it was unbalanced when it released well, and that's... I wanted to wait. <laughs> uh, also because I work six days a week and don't have time. Uh, w w do you think the demo itself will receive any updates in, in that regard like as far as balancing as Arch Thrones um, kind of enters its final stretch or do you think the next big step is just the full release itself? Um, we are working on, I think there already is a new balancing patch out. Okay. Um, and also we plan on adding on armor sets from uh, left out characters. Because, you know, there are things planned for the demo that haven't made it in. Okay, so the demo has its own like little, not like anything huge, but like its own little list of updates that yeah, you guys are continuing course, to chip away on. The demo itself has cut content. <laughs> the mod itself also has cut content. Which is, you know, isn't that crazy to think, like, we kind of restore cut content in a way. Um, like, you know, in the original game, the tree spirit boss was cut content. It was meant to be, I suppose, a puss of man type snake soul yeah. thingy. Um, and we brought that back in that sort of way. But at the end, you know, the dancer in cut content was an NPC, and we brought that back. 
but we also have had plenty of ideas that didn't make the cut. Not all of them being, you know, cut content from actual Dark Souls 3 that we wanted to restore, but just ideas that we had that we had worked on that we ultimately didn't have a space to bring in. I've always wondered how that thing kind of works. Like the, the idea of how cut caught cut content gets like it is i guess like manifested to begin with like i guess everyone has like their own reasons like oh this doesn't fit with a creative vision or, yeah oh, there's and, just not and enough the space excitement as well just like i want to keep adding things and then but wait we shouldn't like feature creep it was definitely one of our biggest struggles early on there's always that one thing or that one idea that i think people are just like foaming at the mouth to get to and just like build already because like you're so excited about how it's going to turn out w were there any standout moments like that for like for you or for like as the team or for the team doing yes. development very early on um you might remember there were videos featuring the nameless king with a new look and ornstein with a new look as a boss fight in a sunny and a yep. londo mm -hmm. yes <laughs> that is obviously us jumping the gun <laughs> Why would we have shown you the final boss of the Arch Throne of the Old Gods, otherwise known as the affectionately the Gwendolyn Gamer Chair, uh, before <laughs> before anything else? Is that its, is right. that its asset name? Basically, <laughs> so that definitely would be one of those standout moments. Um, another standout moment is when we were planning the development of. Uh, we have a loosely defined. Uh, this is what we want the whole mod to look like at the end, right? Like all the levels, all the bosses. Okay, kind of like that, a roadmap. Yes, I mean at this point it's heavily outdated, but at one point in time there were so many bosses, and when I say feature creep, I mean feature creep. <laughs> we had planned. I'm not gonna say we had planned. Um, I went through the Trello board and deleted 80 boss names in total. Just the, okay, like so, so you guys were like balance. literally making like I, I imagine I have a headcanon that the end of this roadmap is just the the words the words Elden Ring two just like in big bold fucking. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's more like oh i want to fight this character i want to meet this character i want to have a fight using these uh move sets that's this actually game. really funny how that was idealized how the boss like i i like because most games like oh i i want this feature added or i want this as an npc but in, in like in dark souls games you like you add people's like i want to kick this guy's ass make him a yes. boss fight <laughs> um, the running joke early on was between me and you know big boss and i guess the rest of the team was uh before we settled on hey let's develop a demo that's a vertical slice of the mod right before we came to that conclusion it was it's arch thrones it's smash ultimate everyone is here <laughs> it, it, sometimes i would call it god of war to like dog on big boss because he wanted to meet and kill every single god mentioned across the games even in lore if even if they hadn't shown up in game and is that where Hathi and Skull came from? Hathi and Skull is wanting to kill- No, no, that was, um, <laughs> uh, we have fun naming characters. <laughs> like, you know, every Dark Souls newbie is a Velka fanboy, like, oh, I want to meet Velka. We are not for- just so anyone who hears this, we are not putting Velka in the mod. <laughs> <laughs> Um, don't quote me on that. Don't but mind me, just hold erasing. me accountable for that. Uh, <laughs> just like erasing half the interview here. Hang on. I mean, just, <laughs> yeah. just get rid of all these questions. <laughs> but, but, you know, there was a time where we wanted to see so many faces all at once. Like, oh, let's bring back Patches, Solaire. Uh, you know, oh, they're all undead. They can come back. Um, <laughs> let, let's, uh,. Let's, you know, let's fight the Nameless King in Ornstein. Let's fight, uh, let's meet Gertrude. Originally it was fight Gertrude, but I was like, no, no, no. Let's meet Gertrude. Not or, everything needs to be on site. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, um, God, I don't even know. There's just so many, like, <laughs> there's just so many names and ideas. I did think it that. was cool seeing Gertrude in the, um, the castle. Gertrude for the, for the is... war, -tor war village area. <laughs> That's good. Uh, Gertrude is the victim of a last-minute rewrite, <laughs> lore-wise. So we did have to get Vati to Vati Video to redo some voice lines that Flynn has that mention Gertrude, of which hmm. are not in the mod. For a moment, we were planning an Alva NPC, but of course now we have a Night Slayer Sorig NPC instead. Um, but. Uh, you know, Saria, of course, is like a Zelda reference. As a uh, jokingly, uh, in the soul for the 
Omen of the Eclipse boss fight. He's called Commander Esmond, and around that time, that was the first time um, Asmongold made a video about <laughs> us. <laughs> and um, <laughs> funnily enough, we had already named the Silver Knight boss um, Erdan, and so having an E, here's a here's like an Esmond, here's an Erdan, an E, like both. Esmond um, Gold. <laughs> <laughs> yes, basically, um, That's both uh, knight hilarious. commander. Um, it, it's kind of like a theme we have. Is like every boss who happens to be the commander of a force <laughs> of knights. So, uh, Esmond of the Lothric Knight Pillar, or Erdan of the Silver Knights who live in Alain Lois. Those are the E guys. They're they're from the clan <laughs> of E sounding name. Of course, one of them is an Asmund clan of E. <laughs> I wonder if Asmund got because I know he streamed it at some point. I wonder if he actually got to that part in the demo and he was like, I feel like it's fairly subtle. Actually, yeah, on, on, it's I, fairly yeah, subtle until you bring right. it up. Yeah, um, that makes more sense. Actually, I don't think he would have. <laughs> and of course, names like that might pop up even more. The dancer, um, we've named her Selen after Selen Vinland from Demon Souls. So Selene <laughs> in Greek mythology is the goddess of the night, and Selen Vinland is like a Demon Souls character. And of course, the name Selen was reused for the lunar royalty uh, witch in. Elden Ring. And so, first of all, I came up with the name Princess Selen of Aerithel first. So, Elden Ring, <laughs> get off my so back. Elden Ring can suck it. Yeah, uh, you I was heard like, it here I, first. I copied Demon's Souls first. You didn't copy your own. Elden Ring first. copied I me, did. motherfucker. Yes. <laughs> I think the design for Quella, well, Quella obviously already existed as a lore character in Dark Souls 2, but Mikola in Elden Ring is a very similar character concept and story in general. So naturally, mm, we cleaved yep. close to that in visuals on accident. Because <laughs> um, uh, the, the design for Quella came very early, um, but being implemented into the game came very late. So he uses the rig of, uh, uh, how you say, uh, the Queen of Caria Renala holding the amber egg. Um, so the skeleton that Quella, God of Dream, uses. And yes, to everyone listening, Quella is a he. <laughs> um, <laughs> It, it's Quella's Gwendolyn 2.0, basically. Uh, Quella uses Renala's rig so that we could have someone holding this cocoon. Because Quella is basically Princess Filianor 2.0. In terms of, yes, there is a deity who sleeps and is in like a tree and is holding some type of egg and has something to do with the abyss or the deep. I think that's that's really cool hearing like all the things like it, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about before how everything you see in in a project like this like it's going to be from a souls game somewhere yeah and like hearing how you got really creative with like oh he, he's in this pose so it makes sense to give him this rig and, and i think i yeah. think that's really a really cool way to like kind of synonymize it mm -hmm. with other souls games i think um a lot of uh, what we do is pouring through um the other games wikis Okay, um, sorry, I just realized that I, I heard someone today say wiki, and so, like, I don't know how to pronounce it. But anyway, uh, we, I have a, just pretty much a Discord channel, I have a Discord uh, chat room in the Archthrones dev server, right? That's just list of available rigs we can use. And so it's just like, oh yeah, here are all the available characters from Bloodborne, from Dark Souls 1, <laughs> from Elden Ring, that... Uh, from Dark Souls 3 that we haven't used or that we can use and that we can mix up to create something new with. In terms of planning content for the mod in the future, it is like, when and where can we use these things? So, uh, for example... Ooh, can I spoil this? I, I don't know if I can spoil this. Um, here, is it in the think. demo? <laughs> no. Oh, um, shit. Well, I, I can tell um, you now, if you did spoil it, it would be great for my channel. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have um, a boss fight that is, uh, the, the plan for the boss fight is to use um, animations from an enemy who can stand on both his legs, animations from an enemy that is crawling on all fours, mm -hmm. and then an animation set from an enemy that is only on its like knees or doesn't walk at all. Okay, so like three different, three different yeah. rigs like com compiled into one boss. Yeah, like animations retargeted from three different enemy characters to craft the identity of this one boss encounter that we have planned. I, I can't wait to see how, how the comment section is going to theorize with, 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 that, with that bit of info. I, I'm afraid that it's Because you know they're going to get... I, I don't think it's that obvious. Like, w when you say, like, crawling or on their knees, that, that, that could be anything. That could be anything from Fire Giant to fucking Lawrence from Bloodborne. 
and and we do have i think <laughs> the uh cleric machine stew does that thing right and obviously the yeah, first boss cut off loses his, his leg because like, uh the around. stone the stone demon rig from dark souls 3 loses its legs and so our first boss also loses its legs i i guess the main thing is because i really like dragon's dogma um shout out dragon's dogma 2 of course <laughs> is um uh whenever we make bosses and of course sif in dark souls 1 kind of instilled this idea that because we're setting the story of the mod in a time before everyone's died and been resurrected that when you're fighting them you actually are cutting them down mm -hmm. so like you know, attacking a giant person or creature. It does put a sense of realism it, to it, yeah. Yeah, you know, because I hate, I hate bosses where you're ankle biting. And yeah. <laughs> a lot of uh, Dark Souls huge enemies are Lots of ankle just biting. biting the ankles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I, if we're going to do any ankle biting, I want it to feel satisfying. Yeah, I think you're like listing out everything and I, I it's, it's slowly starting to be put in like, it's putting into perspective just how much work all of this is. Like, I, like, as someone who's made their own little projects on the side here and there, like, I know how hard this shit is. I know that finally getting to this point in the journey, as far as development goes, like, part of you is just like, holy shit. <laughs> like, we it's, did all that? Jesus. It's bittersweet. It's very bittersweet because... Uh -huh. Obviously, we wanted to put something out, right? Once we set this, our sights on having a demo and finally releasing the demo, it's like, oh, we did it, finally. Yeah. Ooh. But then it's like... Then you oh. look at the checklist of everything else and you're just like, oh, fuck. <laughs> now that we've done the demo, that means once the demo released, I realized I have to start drawing things again and writing things again yep. and planning you have things to get back again. To work. <laughs> I, yeah, I, basically, I have to stop just managing people and then start uh, doing things again, which is what I did for two years was doing things non-stop while studying in university. Of course, I went to university for concept art, so it's nice to have something I can apply that degree. Cool. Um, get, obviously, get a good the game's industry... Going. Yeah, and obviously the game's industry is in dire straits right now, so doing something for fun while <laughs> making money during the day is um, desirable. We have to plan the rest of the mod now. I was just wondering about, like, because like, you, you are the planner, or at least a planner on the team. Modding tools have become more accessible over time and like I, yes. I think we're at a point in time where we've seen more we've seen so many overhaul mods like one comes out every other month that someone's excited for like yeah, we've got reforge like convergence dark moon uh like the ascended mod and they all handle their own balancing very differently nightfall as well is really exciting nightfall yeah ah. i guess just being such a huge undertaking was there a specific starting point like like was there was there a thing that you as a team decided to focus on first and just be like okay let's knock that out and that'll set the pace for the rest of development remember when i said we jumped the gun and showed off an orlando early yes <laughs> <laughs> so when we did that we sat down and we said how do we want to release this mod all at once as a finalized experience or in installments right because it's demon soul structured there's one level and different thrones and you mm -hmm. access it like we could very well release it in chapters and um we decided not to even in the demo where we're patching things, adding new things in still that were meant to be in the mod or demo anyway. Especially if we change the experience of the first few levels, right? Like, what if we change something about early game? Then having it release in installments would be a disaster on a technical scale. I think it would be harder to maintain, yeah. Yes. Like, I, we don't want to maintain a live service game, basically. <laughs> we don't have- nobody has the money for that. But at the same time, we asked each other, do we want to work on every single arch throne, so each map level, one at a time? Or do we want to do it level by level by level? Uh, I think right now it kind of looks like we are just working on it in installments, but that might change based on how easy it is to um, make certain things, right? Like obviously we're going to be planning out what the rest of the world looks like. Mm -hmm. Like obviously because we showed early versions of the mod so soon, the final iterations are more than likely not going to appear. So say the most anyone's seen of late game because Anne Orlando would be late game, right? Like, that's the final section yep. of that map um, post-hide. We want stuff in between, and there might be more major changes to the story or where things, you know, as usual with Dark Souls games, things might be shuffled around. So 
that one is still up in the air, but from what it looks like is it, it just depends on what is planned out and set in stone first. Because obviously sure. plans have to be... Plans have to have backup plans, like if something technically doesn't work, like, oh, we can't use this map asset, or we can't use this, like, enemy because it doesn't work properly in the game, then we obviously have to have, like, a backup or an alternate idea to use if our primary plan doesn't go to, go to fruition. But at the same time, having learned our lesson from, you know, donning, having done Anorlando, Irithyll, <laughs> and then Hyde all in one go, we're <laughs> we're obviously going to have a more thoroughly developed plan rather sure. than going we want to do these things let's do it based on vibe and energy <laughs> so so no we definitely want to actually uh, that's how you get a list of 80 bosses that you need to cut yes yes indeed <laughs> yes <laughs> oh it was so stressful in the moment and then like in hindsight it's just hilarious to think about what w what was like the largest because because you said you had to make a lot of like idea cuts at least like okay we can't do this we can't do this has it ever become like an actual obstacle like you had like a bunch of stuff confirmed and you realized a few months later into production that oh we might actually have to take this out like has that yes. actually made a problem within the team where people were yes. like oh i don't want that to be cut it's like what do you mean it's fine like that kind of thing I mean, obviously, managing a team, some things just, uh, if you're new to managing a team, that is, and like, because this is obvi uh, obvious is the word of the day, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, to me, it's obvious because I've suffered through it, but uh, learning how to communicate with a bajillion people all the yep. time, all at once, and Sucks. have things, <laughs> yes, and so things don't always go to plan. So things like, oh, where did this random American voice actor I didn't vet show up from? Where did this artist I never saw the portfolio oh, for yeah. <laughs> show up from? And then I have to, you know, work with it or deal with it or handle it in whatever way that means. Or where did this boss fight come from? <laughs> I don't remember <laughs> hearing about this. So, um... Has that actually happened? Have you had to cut out like an entire boss fight just because you were like, this what this isn't supposed to be here. We didn't agree on this. What is this? Um, it's more like we uh, changed our minds about things. But it was like middle of the road. Like you've never had a fully fleshed out boss fight that was in the game, and then someone was like, get rid of that. No, I don't that, think that, so. That would be rough. <laughs> It's it's hard to um work with the um mechanics for stealth that come packaged with Dark Souls games. While all you know when line of sight doesn't actually exist, it's more like they smell you. Um, that's actually how it works in Dark Souls. Is um uh they call, I think it's called a smell radius. Like can an enemy smell you from a certain distance? Interesting. Like they don't like like they don't look for you. It's just as soon as you enter a specific cone of. Yeah. Of, of, of like distance they just automatically know where you are as far as i'm aware we have made some changes to things gameplay mechanics wise how things work where that might not be the case anymore or maybe there is like a vision cone that uh dark souls enemies have that we weren't able to properly utilize i mean it would make sense that a boss that is blind wouldn't be able to use a vision cone or um a boss that is human smelling you <laughs> you know the suddenly targeting you and then untargeting you if you get two away and stop moving mm -hmm. like with what dark souls 3 has to offer that the, the disgrace knight boss being the blind fallen hero from demon souls was too difficult to uh, do so uh in terms of how the fight works things have changed quite a lot it, he was actually much more like the soul of cinder uh dex version with the curved sword and the you know backflip yeah earlier on than he was now. Those are really cool animations. And I think more people should use those. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, that boss has been thoroughly dissected and used for a bajillion different enemies and bosses in Arch Theron. Um, so, yeah, also like the idea of it being a Dark Moon Knight that's fallen from grace also came very late. Well, not, not very late, but like when we settled on there being a demo and like other things, like a structure to how the mod will be developed rather than going, hey, let's just throw this in there. That's when defining, oh, this is a Dark Moon Knight who did something bad and got fired for it that we're fighting instead <laughs> of- no uh, longer present in this realm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, the original um, fallen uh, hero boss fight, so Disgraced Knight before it was a Disgraced Knight, um, had a 3D model that looked much more like a Lannister, a uh, Lost Rick Knight type character from, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, imperialist that's been messed with and beaten and battered over the years of battle. Like, that no longer is what that enemy looks like. I, I think we'll probably release that as, like, a player armor set in the far future, if not as, like, a random enemy, if not a boss. 
I think the last question, the, or the last like serious question, I guess that I have written down, and uh, th this is a non-committal question. Like you don't have to give me too much information if, if you don't want to. Okay. I don't know how at liberty you are to discuss the Patreon of of the project has stated before that it's like the Patreon is the main source of income for this whole this whole project. I think the the subject of production costs isn't nearly as talked about widely, like in communities like this. I guess just because it's not exciting. Yeah. And um, um, were there like, I guess, were there like any hidden costs or financial curveballs like production wise you ran into during development where you were just like, holy shit, like this costs a lot more than I thought it would. The mod is a not for profit endeavor. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the Patreon and what it's used for, it's once we started generating enough income, just enough to give people who work on the mod money, obviously everyone will want to jump on that and get their cut because yep. everyone's worked very hard. And managing that when it is a finite resource is uh, something we had to learn really quickly. And what to use it on, like the, the intention of the Patreon is to support us as just a group of individuals, like, like actually yeah. support us. Like for the most part, the Patreon has been used to uh, commission people for either exclusive art pieces. So for example, in Hyde's Tower of Flame level, so the Phoenix Tower, Irithyll level, in Quayla's chamber, there are paintings from an artist called Let the Chip Sail on Twitter. Um, we commissioned a painting of Guinevere I was and, wondering uh, about those. and, and Flan. Yeah. Uh, she, she let us use the other paintings that she already made. I remember seeing those but, paintings in game and I was like, where did they get those? <laughs> yeah, we have Guinevere and Flan, which was a special request from us. Um, the opening intro cinematic and all the loading Ooh, yeah. screens are, um, uh, you know, commissions from, uh, you would recognize Mena SGL from the Souls fan community. Uh, there's a lot of Dark Souls fan art and Elden Ring fan art um, doing the loading screens. Um, there's also tools for development that we've, you know, financed because you can't... The, the tools for modding Dark Souls 3 have gotten a lot better over the past three years. Way better, And, and yeah. part of that is us throwing money at the people who made those. <laughs> That, that does tend to have a lot to do with it, yeah. Yeah, because, like, obviously there's a lot of uh, These modders people also or, like, work six days a week yeah. doing their own <laughs> shit. And um, if they're going to be spending time, valuable time, on a non-profit project, um, we can at least give back by, you know, helping compensate for their time. Yeah. But also, we just want it to be easier for people to make mods. Just add that it. That would be add quite nice. Little audience clap sound effect right there <laughs> because arch thrones is probably one of the more difficult mods to have made i think it's probably the yeah like in terms of scope i, I haven't in i guess maybe like nightfall but even then like i, I haven't seen a, a mod project that's this big in scope yeah um i don't know what particular tools we've paid for <laughs> you know um but we have uh, very recently a good amount of people express dissatisfaction with the sense that because it is a mod we are forced to just steal animations from different games in the from software repertoire you know like elden ring and bloodborne and so yeah. on and so we did pay for some um, online courses for rigging and animation. So hopefully in the future we can, uh, how you say... I think that's a good investment. ...have, you know, custom animations. Part, part of like, blurring I the lines that we were talking about earlier. Like, not everything has to be from, like, another Souls or Souls-adjacent game. Yeah, and also the sense that we are basically making a whole new game and we want to eventually make our own game. So we can train those skill sets. That's all the power to us in the future, in our own endeavors. I think, uh, I, I think so, some of these questions I just left in here for fun. How many, um, ha have you worked on other, like, projects that don't include Archstorm? Like, they don't even have to be Souls related. Like, is, is this um, something you've been, like, enamored with for a while? Some of our, uh, members are working on their own indie games. Some of which I have maybe provided concept art for. Okay. I think that's like the most, the, the furthest extent that I've worked on like games, I guess. Except for like my own forays into making small indie games when I was like much younger. And yeah. me now just training as a concept artist, illustrator, and uh, trying to do things. And you know, just participate in community.
What, what, what do you think is like the meanest YouTube comment or like just general piece of feedback you've ever received from someone? Like it doesn't need to be on Arch Thrones. It could be about literally anything. Like, hmm. in terms of Arch Thrones, I have fun reading the YouTube and Twitter comments <laughs> and replies. <laughs> Sometimes people go, will this happen? Can I have this? Or please put this in the mod. Can I have and this? I go, I go, no, or yes in the future. Or sometimes it's like, um, as a lore nerd, I have a lot of fun reading the lore discussion channel in the Arch Thrones fan public discord thingy. Like people's takes on my own writing, like <laughs> what people think the interpretation of the story is and stuff like that, I, I think is very interesting and fun. Um, sometimes things get really strange. <laughs> <laughs> like you know as, as you know lore discussion tends to be sometimes things get really strange and i tilt my head and other times things are just like wow they figured that out fairly quickly or oh maybe i wrote that very bluntly or maybe i was too obtuse when i wrote this thing are, are, are you are you excited about the non-zero chance arch thrones has of, of getting its own section in like fan fiction communities in the future like lore videos. <laughs> yeah <laughs> my, fa my favorite my favorite thing is arch thrones fan art every anytime arch thrones fan art has been like posted online and we found it we like share it and it becomes like like the big topic like we just repost it over and over again in the discord and just kind of like guys look we got fan art and just everybody watches and sits there and just goes like wow this makes us feel good and and so if you have arch thrones fan art even stuff, even if, if it's like in crayon or stick figures, <laughs> that that stuff is very motivating and makes us a very happy. A wall of text. Uh, even a wall of text, <laughs> yeah. Um, when it comes to like gameplay mechanics, like oh, or maybe some visuals. Sometimes it's like, oh, this 3D model doesn't look like it belongs in Dark Souls. Well, whatever, <laughs> you know. <laughs> like, it's like that's I'm like your opinion, 3D, man. <laughs> I, I'm not a 3D modeler, so maybe. So like maybe that's a question to take up with the 3D artists or um why does a certain thing look this way like take it up with the designer I mean basically take it take it up with me half you, the you time you got to contact but... HR <laughs> yes it's like oh I, I remember reading comments on our character design for Flynn where people I didn't design Flynn but I oversaw that and some people said oh that looks like a Destiny 2 character what? And I thought, oh, I don't like seeing that. Hold on, but let me look up time, Flynn Arch Thrones. But at the same time, uh, I think it is valuable feedback because one thing as a designer and as someone designing for Dark Souls is oh, the Flynn definitely is very fantasy armor esque. I remember Flynn. Whereas, okay. like, we also, you know, the, the theme, the aesthetic of the game is to have like historical armor, beautiful armor that's been beaten and battered. I'm gonna show and up so, concept art of Flynn here in the video. Just flash it. Ahead. This is not a Destiny 2. This this looks more like a Dishonored character. Yeah, and um, yeah, obviously we disagreed with that comment, and it was one comment out of like hundreds of comments. Sure. <laughs> that it was like this is a Destiny 2 character, and I thought, hmm, for a moment. <laughs> but maybe there is something valuable in you know in that uh perspective, and which is why I try to be a lot more careful in terms of designing armor. I looking at real life because it's very easy to look at dark souls when designing a dark souls character right you know like oh uh i got to design a knight for dark souls let's just look at other dark souls characters but that's yeah. not what the designers of dark souls characters did they looked at real world stuff and anime as well yes. <laughs> of course i think that's really important went, let's let's uh let's uh, reiterate on that so like Character designs that I feel personally were weak from myself. Uh, Sir Florian was heavily derivative of the uh, statues of the Blue Sentinels and of Blue Sentinel Targray. I think his design works, but I do think in hindsight I could be more elegant or at least more researched about how to portray um, him okay. as a character visually. So like the, the historical realism isn't quite there, you don't think? I, I think he just looks a bit awkward. And there, and he still looks good, but he does look awkward. And there are things that I could have done in the concept art stage to fix that. Uh, another example of maybe reading comments where people look at the uh, Angelic Siege Golem, so the Tower Knight boss, and going, that's Big Gundir with Yorm's moves and Angel Wings. 
and Lorien's attacks. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, if you look at the 3D model, that's not Big Gundir. Or like, oh, he looks a bit awkward with those big fluffy wings that do nothing. And so like in hindsight, like, yes, perhaps we could have spent more time discussing that design. If we're going to change anything, I would cut off the wings and replace them with like the fake wings that the winged knights have, like the blue ones have. Like, I Passar thought that's what they wings. were at first glance, honestly. Like, I, j I just assumed that's what they were. Because it's like, that, oh, the, the wings aren't functional along the winged knights either. Why would they, why would it be the case here? There's a cut character, well, not a cut character, but a character that never made it into the demo. That would have had a functionality similar to a crystal lizard or like those little grubs in Hollow Knight, like you'll collect them all. Damn. Like, there was meant to be a little squire character. Wasn't expecting Hollow Knight to get mentioned in this interview. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there was, you know, we have inspirations everywhere, but there are plenty of iterations of the Irithylian squire character, inspired by that little uh, small doll that you get in Aldrich's coffin, um, mm -hmm. and the statues of the squires in the Church of Yorshka. There are various versions of that design. Even now, I have just recently made changes to those designs yet again. And there's already a pre-existing 3D model that um, likely will get changed. Is that usually like a common thing for your workflow? Like, are you are you one of those, or are you a type of artist that like just like gets it one and done perfectly? Like, I have this other thing to work on, or do you just spend like days Some upon things, days just agonizing over the same like details? It's a bit of both. Some things fall into place quite easily. Like Aldrich, he fell into place very quickly. Um, then like uh, this Irithyll Squire. Two different 3D models, a bajillion different designs, and still things are going to be changed. Uh, the original purpose was for this character to be kind of like, oh, here's a squire um, pointing at like a fog wall. Well, not a fog wall, but like a secret, like something illusory, like an illusionary wall, or maybe like a secret item, like mm -hmm. a character that kind of just happens to be everywhere pointing to you to secrets. But with um, how the demo worked, there's no illusionary walls, so don't go smacking every single wall, please. Um, <laughs> or don't go walking off ledges that might be invisible bridges, like, <laughs> like don't go doing that, because that's not in the mod. I'm very sorry. <laughs> Does uh, there exist a clip of somebody, like, testing that, like an invisible bridge, and then they just walk off? I, I think I, I've, I've seen, like, say, Prod on YouTube question if there's an invisible <laughs> pathway here and there. Stuff like that. And I'm just like, you know what? It would be neat if there were an invisible pathway there, but we don't have that there. Um, and also in terms of just like, you know, collectibles. Like how I mentioned Hollow Knight, like you you save the little grubs and then they show up in a room and give you a reward. Uh, and games like Blasphemous where that happens as well. I yeah. figured like, oh yeah, um, here's an Irithyll Squire far from home. Collect them all, get a reward. Mm -hmm. I've always been curious about like just how like cut content gets created, like I said. You know, like, I'm in search of the most common reason. You're trying to find the most common denominator. Yeah. Uh, and it sounds like it might be just a bunch of people being like, guys, let's make this awesome thing. And then they make the awesome, like over the top thing. And then they dwell on it for a week and they're like, fuck. That was like, a bad idea. That was, I don't <laughs> think this is going to work. <laughs> yeah, definitely. It, it's, it's excitement. Mm -hmm. But content is the result of um, enthusiasm. Excitement. Um, yeah. in, in, impatience and um, a lack of structure. Yeah, you're gonna have fun editing two hours of rambling. <laughs> that doesn't. That wouldn't take as long as you think it would. It's like That's some good. some people like that. Some people like the listening in the background sort of approach. Ah, yeah. Sometimes when I draw, I just sit there and mm -hmm. just listen to whatever YouTube gives you. I think editing and like writing scripts are the same way. I don't know. I love talking about the mod and then also showing you everything. Like, if, if you want spoilers, just look at my art, uh, art station. Um, or at the Happy New Year post on our Twitter for Arts Thrones, because there are spoilers in there, I guess. Sometimes I ramble about things that out of context are actually about Arch Thrones on my Twitter. <laughs> like all this. But uh, we don't have... It, it's on brand. We don't have a contract NDA, you know? It's, it's just like, this is... Yeah, it, it's a mod. Like, who, who fucking cares? This is something we do as a hobby. Yeah. Just for fun. And even then, most NDAs are stupid and not enforceable anyway, so... <laughs> I, I think the fact that I have certain character designs featured in illustrations by other artists 
is what's going to stop me from redesigning things into oblivion over and over again and then never having anything <laughs> 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 it's because you have like a skeleton to work with yeah well at the very least if i make any changes i don't need i can't make any major changes like oh you showed this guy and now he looks completely different in the final release why like because shit changes I mean, like what do you mean why yeah. <laughs> to everyone who listens um we love your fan art maybe <laughs> we can have an art thrones fan art feature on i don't know the social media if not in the discord chat i think that yeah i think that'd get a lot of people a lot of people excited a lot of people participating in it for sure and um at that point it just kind of generates excitement by itself yeah Obviously, uh, my favorite part of the games is fashion souls, which is why we go out of our way to design such nice which looking is armor. Objectively correct. So um, <laughs> please continue to post your fashion in the Discord. Fan art makes people happy. I'm not asking for fan art. Don't go out of your way to design something for Art of Thrones <laughs> and then ask you, us to put it in the game because that's not the how it now. works. We received a fan art of the Nameless King and Ornstein together because we have different designs for them. We've received fan art about Quella and Gwendolyn, who is not in the demo, but is mentioned a few times. Quella is uh, fun and it's cool to see fan art of my character that I voiced and designed, who is also a tree. So when you join the Way of Blue, that is also Quella's voice. Join I the gave, tree covenant um, today. Join Tree Covenant, dude. I, I feel like that'd be like I feel like that was a missed opportunity for a, for a lot of people. Well, it wouldn't fit in the Dark Souls universe. I, I've always envisioned like propaganda posters for each Covenant. Yes, yes. I, I have no idea how I haven't seen fan art of that. This is a game that's been out for almost eight years, and I haven't seen fan art of that. I've seen like uh, we want you to join the Warriors of Sunlight. I've seen those, but only oh yeah, the for, for the Sun Bros, yeah, for because they're like iconic. But like for any for any other. Like, every other covenant in the game just gets completely forgotten. That gives me an idea for an NPC. <laughs> How does that give you an idea? I, I just want to hear the covenant, like, leaders dog on each other. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a Dark Moon Knight, yikes. Get out of <laughs> just someone saying yikes like they're on fucking Twitter. <laughs> yikes. 